Calculus AB, free response, exam review, question 40, mean value theorem. All right, so the twice differentiable functions f and g are defined for all real numbers x, values of f, f prime, g and g prime for various values of x are given in the table above, all shown here. Explain why, why there must be a value c for um, c falls between negative 1 and 1 such that f double prime of c is equivalent to 0. All right, so what we're going to use to support our premise is none other than the mean value theorem. And for many including myself, this is the more pesky aspect of calculus because you know you just wanna get through it, solve problems, do algorithms, but then you're confronted with a proof or a theorem that you have to explain at length. And it can be a bit daunting, but it's really not so bad, okay? So in order for the mean value theorem to hold true, um, the function, which in this case is f prime, has to be differentiable. And we're told in the uh, question stem that it's twice, twice differentiable. So f prime itself can be differentiated again to give you a function f double prime. And it's continuous. And when we say continuous, it means that for the interval um, between negative one and one, like here, the function f prime yields an output, some value for every single value that falls between um, negative one, one. And it is, uh, you know, continuous. There's no indication that it's not continuous. So these two uh, tenets uh, hold true and they uphold the mean value theorem on the interval uh, negative one, one. And note that the interval that we're dealing with has to be a closed interval. An, an open interval would be like so. Between the endpoints negative one, one, but not including one and negative one. While a closed interval uh, includes these endpoints, okay? And we can see here, that at one we have a derivative value of zero and negative one we have a value of zero. Okay, so that's what we're going to deal with next. Therefore, um, if we take the slope or basically the second derivative of f prime of one and f prime of negative one, we're going to find out the average um, slope for these two endpoints, okay? And that's what we need to find out in order to establish the mean value theorem. So um, f prime of 1 is going to give us 0, and f prime of negative 1 is also going to give us 0. And then, you know, we're taking a slope difference. So we plug in 1 minus negative 1 because slope is rise or the output value over run or the input x values, okay? So we just go ahead and plug in the values that we see on our ta table for the numerator and simplify the denominator. Therefore, we get a value of 0, an average value of 0 for the slope or in this case, the derivative of f prime, also known as f double prime, or the second derivative, okay? So the average value of the slope between one and negative one is going to be zero. Okay, since that's the case, then the mean value theorem guarantees that there's at least one value, c, between um, one and negative one, we might not know which one, there might be more than one, where the uh, 
second derivative or the average uh, value of the slope is equivalent to zero. Okay, so the mean value theorem basically justifies our answer. Again, there are some point C. There could be more than one point C where we're going to at least get one point of uh, zero for the slope or the second derivative. And this is because the average value of the slope is zero for our included endpoints on our closed interval. All right, okay.